Hey guys, welcome to this first ADSR Razer tutorial where we're going to talk about Native Instrument Razer which is an additive synthesizer that only works in a reactor so you need reactor in order for it to work and I'm gonna in this video I'm gonna explain the um, most of the interface and just the basic functions and how it works and why it works the way it does um, I'm not going to explain all the uh, stuff um, from Reactor itself, like how to save, um, how to save ensembles and uh, stuff like that, because we have an excellent uh, Reactor channel at ADSR, and you can watch a lot of uh, that stuff right there. And so I'm just going to jump straight in. It's um, as mentioned, it's an additive synthesizer, and additive is quite different from your normal subtractive synthesis and subtractive synthesizers are for example massive and silent and they work by just generating a lot of sound with oscillators and then filtering away the stuff that you don't want and then in the end you will get a nice sound by just manipulating that that whole bunch of sound that was there in the beginning but additive synthesis it's different because you basically start with nothing and then you start adding up stuff and um, it's based on a concept by Joseph Fourier Fourier I don't know if I pronounced that right and he was a French guy and he stated that every sound could be made up out of just sine waves and that is exactly what Razer does it uses just sine waves to create um, new sounds and to see that happening in real time we have this uh, window here this analyzer and when I play a key on my keyboard you can see all the harmonics that are in the sound and a great example of this is uh, for example if I have a pulse to saw oscillator I'm gonna explain all that in a minute but a pulse wave also called a square wave um, has only the odd harmonics of a sound so when I set this oscillator all the way to the left you should see only the odd harmonics and then when I start to drag this up you will see the other harmonics being added there making it more uh, saw wave so this is a very handy way to see what's happening with your sound and that's one of the great things about Razer so but first let's go over the whole interface and just the, the basic notes because everything is going to be a little bit different than um, what you're used to I think first we have the voicing tab right here and this has just the normal functions that are should be familiar to you this is the main pitch here and then we have the fine pitch which works in sends and the other one works in semitones then we have the glide also called portamento uh, random making it a little bit more detuned a little bit more you could almost say analog uh, although it's a bit of a, a, a different thing but it's gonna generate a little bit of randomness and then we have the oscillators here and the filter section right here and here are the effects but I don't want you to think of this as uh, oscillators and filters and effects I want you to think of this whole section as just one big oscillator because of the way additive synthesis works it's not it's not using the effects to manipulate the ending sound it's really changing the sound itself so for example if I click on the title here I get um, some options that I can choose in the filter slot if I choose a low pass filter for now and I turn it on with the knob right here and then I play a sound <laughs> is really changing the harmonics so it's not really filter filtering away the sound it's not working with sound it's working with the with the harmonics and with the additive engine so this is just one whole big oscillator that's creating the sound um, before it goes out so that is that is important to keep in mind and then we have the first oscillator right here and we can choose different oscillators again by clicking on the title and what I find to be very annoying is that when you click something here that the window closes but we can um, disable that by clicking this button right here and now I can choose different oscillators and just go through them and see what they sound like so we have a pulse to saw oscillator uh, we have a duo saw pulse width and now because we uh, lock this window we can just go through them and listen to them all A lot of different sounds and all sounding very clear and 
uh, sharp just like additive synthesis does and all these oscillators look um, different in the in the section here on the left and we're going to talk about all the different modules so don't worry about that for now just experiment a little bit with it and we're going to go into much more depth about that um, we can do the same for the filter if we should switch it on right here we have a low pass low pass ramps low pass broad we have an equalizer and um, this is just the same where it works on it works on the harmonics rather than filtering the real sound and then in filter 2 we have some um, different options again um, so there's there's a lot of uh, variation there and then um, oscillator 2 works on the same sign bank uh, generator I think that's what it's called um, as the first oscillator so it, it these two they have their own source that they use and that's why it, it's not that flexible in terms of uh, detuning the uh, oscillator so that the second oscillator works in the ratio of oscillator one so it depends on oscillator one how you can set the pitch because they use the the same generator and that's that's saving you a lot of uh, cpu power right there um, then we get to the effect amount and the effects are really great in Razer. Um, we have this centroid which I really love. It centers all the frequencies to, to one harmonic and you can see that when I close this window. I'm gonna set the, uh, turn off the filters for now. So it's really merging all the harmonics into one, and then we can set the pitch of that one, that one uh, end result with the uh, with this pitch knob right here. That's pretty cool. Um, and we have well, we have so much cool modules right here. And the great thing is that you with all of them you can see what they do. So this one is really stretching the harmonics. Then we have the reverb, which is also not a normal reverb. It's just, it's really the sound itself. So it's it's making the sound the reverb is synthetic, and um, the advantage of that is that you can play it in pitch. So the reverb tail is gonna always be in pitch because the really it, it is a sound rather than um, an effect on a, on an existing sound. <laughs> Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then we get to the envelope section right here. And the envelopes um, are pretty basic. They just have one um, thing that's a little bit different. That's the echo right here. Which can turn it into a delay as you can hear. This works in conjunction with the um, with the envelopes right here. So you set the shape of the delay basically with the envelope. Um, then we have the LFOs, pretty normal. We can choose different shapes right here. Um, we have some to choose from: signs, squares, random, all that good stuff. Uh, we can lock it by oh by clicking on this hertz uh, button. And now it's you can see at the top right here, it's uh, two times the speed or. Uh, three times the speed of course to hear that first we need to assign it and then um, the saturation is the last one here and these are real effects so these are working on the uh, audio pad and we just have the compressor limiter saturator which sounds pretty nice um, all that stuff and then the last two things here are the spectral clip which can make your sound clip or um, declip depending on what you want and you can see the line where it cuts off the sound I'm gonna disable the delays for now and set the sustain
we can even make some sort of a filter with that with the uh, pitch cutoff. And below that we have the save bass option and if we switch that on it's going to make sure that you always have some sort of audio in there because it needs some, some audio to run. It can be handy to always have a, a signal to uh, manipulate and it also can add just some, some nice bass. just one last thing I want to show you and that is that you can uh, switch to the different the different viewing things so we can view the clipper the filter and filter one and the different oscillators so os oscillator 2 is not switched on right now so we see nothing there but um, this gives you a detailed view on um, what you're working on at that moment and we have this scope which is really cool and it's just an oscilloscope and it's showing the wave so if I choose a normal pulse wave we should see just a square if I click on scope and then we disable the safe base yeah that's our square and we can make it into a saw And if we click this auto button right here, it doesn't switch when I click on another module. We can also switch off the uh, 3D, um, making it a lot more CPU efficient. It's not that fancy anymore, but if you have a slow computer, that can be handy. Let's say we want to assign something to this pulse knob, then we click right here on the circle below the knob that we want to control and then we choose something like uh, LFO2 and then you can really see the the amount and what it's doing and how fast and that's what I like a lot about Razer, it's very visual and you can see what's going on so we can do that for all knobs and um, the, the cutoff for example we can click here on this dot and say LFO1 and then make a range so the gray circle is the range and we can invert it by dragging down and then we can uh, sync it by clicking here now it says beat So yeah, I, I really like uh, Razer and it's easy to get carried away with it. Um, next week we're gonna make some cool sounds. I just wanted to um, let you know about the synth and let you know about the interface. So I advise to experiment a little bit with it and try out some stuff yourself. And then next week we're gonna make some awesome new Razer sounds. So thanks for watching and see you then.